Um, I said before that I was going to talk about um, uh, variable frequency drives and um, lead and lagging again. I, I just want to I just want to reiterate. Um, it's it, fans running at 100 percent can eat up a lot of electricity and a lot of cost. Now I know fans on boilers can you know run from four or five horsepower, but depending on the size of your facility, you can look at 50, 60, 70 horsepower fans, uh, which uh, again can eat up a lot of electricity and a lot of cost. In variable frequency drives on the combustion air fans are a very good thing to take a look at seriously doing for, for you and your, uh, elect your electricity bills. And Chuck, we're seeing ROIs on some of these VFDs to be as short as three or four months. So oh, yeah, w w without, without a doubt. You know, and, and one thing you don't even think about, cost is one thing, but it also makes your boiler room a lot less noisy if your fans are running at 40 hertz or 30 hertz compared to 60 hertz, which is which is 100% all the time, uh, which um, uh, is, is kind of a, a, an unseen advantage to, to working with them as well. Um, here's the other part I wanted to stress a little bit more is the lead in, leading and lagging of the boilers and sequencing them, um, making sure that your boilers are working for you and you're not working for your boilers. I mean, they're there. They're an instrument to make your processes run better. And um, if you're leading and lagging properly and sequencing them properly, uh, you, you might be able to save a whole lot of money and, 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 and reduce a lot of uh, uh, gas costs and electricity costs. But you're still keeping your process people happy or your uh, customers or, or tenants warm, w whatever it might be. Thanks, Chuck. So what we'd like to do now is take five or ten minutes or so and share with you some of the experiences we have. We've done several dozen linkage lists control system projects uh, in all our branches uh, in the Midwest and the uh, Northeast. So we've done jobs for people like Cadbury Schweppes, uh, Pepsi. We did uh, more than one job. In fact, we're seeing this more and more. Pepsi actually has an energy czar. And his goal in life is to get with the plants and make them send up requests to corporate for energy savings projects. And the control links and the nexus we've talked about is a perfect opportunity to do that. Uh, guest packaging, uh, Schindler elevators, we've done uh, universities. Chuck's going to talk about some school districts he did in Green Van Madison and a data center and also a medical center. The Cadbury Schweppes job is a project I was personally involved in. And one of the things that we find on these projects is almost every one we have found by being out there in the boiler room with our customers, looking at other things like flow meters, uh, drum level, or flame safeguard upgrades. And 95% of the time, we've brought up the subject of linkage list controls. So even though they've been on the market for a couple of years, you know, this is why we're doing this webinar, people haven't seemed to grab on, grab on to the capability and understand what the benefits are of putting in a linkage list control system. So at Cadbury, which is now known as Dr. Pepper, they make uh, orange and Yoohoo at this plant. They had two 300 horsepower Cleaver Brooks boilers, uh, gas fired. We put in two Honeywell control link systems, uh, found during the site walk and the initial survey that their flame safeguard equipment was obsolete. So they sent us, we're going through the job to put in the new Honeywell 7800 flame safeguard controllers, upgrade the pressure switches. This particular customer also wanted to take the opportunity to uh, put in steam and measure the steam that he sends out to his process. And also in New Jersey now, the NJDEP has a requirement that all boilers over 5 million BTUs per hour must have indi individual gas meters. So at the same time, this customer went and had us put the gas meters in. And the steam and gas meters actually fed a Honeywell paperless recorder, which every month sends up the fuel usage over the customer's network to tell them what gas and steam usage, usage they used during the previous month. In this particular case, uh, we actually uh, got involved in doing the installation of the startup, but we've always worked a lot with uh, individual contractors. Chuck? Great. Thanks a lot, Bill. Um, I'm going to talk about a school district up in the Green Bay area of Wisconsin. Uh, their overall focus was to reduce energy costs in the building. It didn't matter what it was, they wanted to look at it. Um, and what we've done over the last 
two and a half years is provided uh, close to 30 controlling systems for this for the admin buildings and school buildings in the district. Uh, as we prepared for this, we started to ask a, some questions regarding energy savings, and they were a little hesitant to give exact numbers, but they said, and they were happy to ex express that they saved, in the one school they did their um, audit in, a uh, total savings of 40%. Now, that's not totally attributable to the Honeywell controllings. That's, that's really focused on updating their building automation, VFDs, high efficiency motors. They really looked at, at lighting in some cases. They really looked at, at the entire spectrum, but uh, they said that the control links was a, a, real, a real big part of that for them. Okay. The next uh, um, application I want to talk about was in the Madison area, a school district in the Madison area. Again, they were driven to reduce costs in, in schools, um, and, and they are saving money. They have uh, up to 10 buildings that have um, one to three boilers in that, that have been updated. But the real important thing here is I wanted, I wanted to express, and when I started talking to the, to the customers, was that industrial controls went in and helped train the maintenance department and, and, and focused on getting them on their feet so they could be self-sufficient. And Honeywell was, was gracious enough to come in and do some training on the commissioning standpoint. So it was a real team effort here, and they're completely self-supporting now. And they're up on their feet, and they're, um, they're, they're, they're working great. Here, here's a real interesting case. This is a case where energy wasn't that big of a deal at first. Our customer decided that they needed to upgrade their old and obsolete flame safeguard with a new RM7800. Great idea. Uh, they put the display on it, and with the display, they got an opportunity to see how many times their boiler was turning on and off and on and off and on and off. And in a three-month period after the installation, they noted that the boilers cycled on and off close to 25,000 times. Um, their, their concern was, what am I doing to my boilers by turning them on and off so much? And, and then as we started to talk about it a little bit more, how much energy am I wasting by these boilers purging, trying to, trying to um, relight uh, up to 200 times a day? So we, we, took a, at a look, we took a look at a couple different options. Um, we actually took a look at the new burners because the burners appeared to be oversized, but that was not uh, in the cards at the time. So the next thing we took a look at was Honeywell Controllings, because it gives us the opportunity to really dial in and dial down the air and the gas to a point where the uh, turndown was acceptable, and now they're only running four or five times a day. And they have a number of different buildings uh, that they're looking at putting the Honeywell Controllings in. The last um, facility I'm going to talk about is a medical center here in Milwaukee. Um, again, they were driven to reduce energy costs. It was a mandate. They pretty much looked at everything else they could do, and, ener and energy seemed like uh, the next available step. And we put the system on in December. It was on, a, as it says here, a 1960s era B&W water tube. Uh, typically, what they've done, what they did through through the heating season, is they would uh, change their lead boiler uh, to any one of three, and then lay the other ones in as required. Uh, but since this one was running so well, they decided they decided, and, and it made perfect sense to have this one running lead all winter long, and then lagging the other two. Uh, so what we're doing now is we're in the process of providing a proposal for another for another boiler to upgrade that. And uh, get that get that going. I think in the uh, next couple months here. 